yeah. You see these two guys smiling? Uh, <laughs> I'm firing up for this one because I'm kind of nervous. I'm rolling up the sleeves. I'm smoking a cigarette. I know we shouldn't smoke on camera and stuff, but you know what? Feeling kind of nervous. We'll see how this ride goes because it could be a roller coaster with these two guys. So uh, this is stirring the pot with Don Kincaid and my very special guest, uh, the House of Pain, combined together uh, f uh, separately. One Nick Payne and one uh, I hear the uh, I am to hear you are a hell of a rapper. One Hakeem Ali. Uh, hey, Where, do you get that I, Where do you get that information from? Uh, uh, hey. I got my sources, my friend. I'm Don Kincaid from Center Rinky K Files. They digging deep, bro. They digging deep yeah, on your past. <laughs> uh, we're getting into that later. <laughs> you didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> oh shit! This is gonna be awesome. <laughs> I see why you saved us for last, huh? <laughs> uh, this is a nightcap, if you will. This is my fourth. Uh, uh, it's been a hell of a weekend. This is my fourth interview, 10 of the entire weekend, Saturday and Sunday alone. I've done 10 interviews. This, my friends, is the nightcap. We're capping it all off the weekend right here with the House of Pain. And I cannot think of anybody else that I'd rather cap this soiree off this whole weekend with these two guys. But because talk about big personalities, talk about, uh, wow, uh, larger than life characters. Talk about mean, nasty, getting in the ring, steamrolling people, effing people up. That's what they do. Why do you think they're called the House of Pain? Uh, I cannot thank you guys for spending the time with me because we have a rocky relationship. So I thank you for coming and sitting down, man. I appreciate it, man. I mean, you just said a, a mouthful right there. You definitely described the House of Pain. Yeah, man. Th and and also thank you, bro. Like I mean, we we do have our rocky relationship, but what you do for us and what you do for every other guy that steps in the ring, we we can't thank you enough because during this uncertain time, you know, you keeping us alive and you keeping the, the that heartbeat going, and we appreciate it. Well, I, I I thank you for that. I'm feeling. See that, boys and girls. We didn't start off that rocky. We started off with a little bit of love. So don't worry. Hey, this my. <laughs> Oh, shit. So, I shouldn't have. They don't get there. Don't worry about it. You should have seen when they answered. I go, oh, shit. You guys actually answered. So uh, we're going to see where all of this goes. Uh, the House of Pain combined to uh, singles. I've never seen you singles. I want to start right there because curiosity's got me as a fan. Have you guys always been a tag team in the biz or were you singles wrestlers that came together to become a tag team? I'll let you start that, Nick. Uh, all right. Well, we were we originally started as singles. Um, I started a little bit before Hakim. So I was actually in the Bronx. I had my own little fed called Empire Pro Wrestling. And I, I was there and, and putting most of the stuff together. And I had a singles run and I actually met Hakim through that. Oh. that. That company that I had went under because of the New York State Athletic Commission and Hakim actually brought us to where he had started training, which was Fighting Spirit Wrestling in Brooklyn. And then I'll throw it to you, bro. You can finish it from there. Yeah, I started out training with um, the SATs, Joel Maximo. Uh -huh. And um, from TNA, you know that. You know what that is, right, oh. though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you look like, when I was saying it, you look like, yeah, yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? I'm trying so, to pay attention. Like, I'm trying to pay attention so you don't bitch slap me, okay? This is oh, true. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So I started my training there, and um, I met Nick and uh, the rest of the guys, and uh, we came over um, to Fighting Spirit Wrestling. And as he said, we both started as singles. And then I had a few with Mike Verner. You know Mike Verner. I do know Mike Verner. He was, he was actually my first tag partner, Mike Verner. Wait, <laughs> you and the Man of Steel were tag partners? Your very first tag, tag partner? We was a tag team, and then I turned on him. And we had a, what a surprise. <laughs> and then after that, after that war was over, we was brought up to the offices at um Fighting Spirit Wrestling. And they had um myself, Nick Payne, and Big Daddy Dre. And they said, Oh, we're gonna put y'all guys together as a team. And that's how it started. Man, I uh, will June tell you June 7, 2013, I think it was June 7th. 
27, 2014 was our first match as a team together. Yeah, it was at a um Eddie Guerrero Memorial Show. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, now I saw I just got into the game kind of late. I, I started getting into really getting into it, like uh, the indie scene, if you will. 2016 uh, started up at PVP up in Massachusetts. Started checking out more shows. Started whipping up my phone a little bit more. Gained some really cool relationships with you men and women out there. Oh my goodness, that that's something that will last me a lifetime. And that that's a whole other story. You guys are just so gracious with your time. It's unbelievable. Um, but when I came in the game, there was Big Daddy Dre. There was the three of you, man. You guys, uh, man, what big characters, big guys. Uh, you come in and you do some big guy shit that you would not expect a big guy to do. So I'm going to call it medium-sized guy, uh, <laughs> a big guy doing medium-sized guy stuff. And I'm telling you, boys and girls, if you don't know who the, the House of Pain don't fuck that up. It's D-A, the House of Pain. Don't fuck that up because you're going to end up at some kind of weird porn site. Don't do it on Google, man. You're going to end up at some funky stuff. Uh, so anywho, uh, 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 you guys are were crazy. And myself and my dad, because I take my dad to all the shows, we latch on to you guys just like that, man, because you're, you're big, larger-than-life characters. You talk a big game. You got a lot of attitude. And I love to boo the piss out of you. That makes it so much more fun. Uh, my dad, he's a smart guy. He won't boo uh, you guys. He cheers for you guys. He likes you guys a lot. Uh, me, on the other hand, I'm not that bright. I boo the shit out of you. We have a lot of fun like that. Uh, I know I've been talking like I'm doing cocaine, but I'm very excited to see you guys on this show. I've never had the house of pain. Uh, so with that being said, Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling, you guys have made an absolute tear in that company. I want to start. Is that your home promotion right now? Yes. Yeah. Right Right now, we can. Paradise Alley is where we're based out of. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I'm in Connecticut. Paradise Alley's in Connecticut. Love that because there's not a whole lot of stuff in Connecticut to go to. We've got the Test Your Strength you guys are aware of. We've got the PAPW. Some have popped up. Some have gone away. But, man, you guys take us on a fantastic ride. We talk storylines on here. We talk characters. I love both. And I know there's a lot that makes up wrestling and a wrestler and such. But you guys seem to be really hooked on those storylines and character driven. Can you talk to us about that kind of stuff? Because that's a major, major part of wrestling. Well, we yeah. we grew up we grew up in the um the old school 80s, 90s era of storytelling, like with NWA, um with uh Tully and R. Anderson. The Hart Foundation, the British Bulldogs, those are the type of tag team rockers. Those are the type of tag teams that we um we do our homework with and we just adjust it to our style. Uh, now, Mr. Yeah, Payne. I mean, the, the storytelling part to us. Yeah, now the, the story part uh, is he here? Did you leave, dog? Yeah, yeah. You there? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Oh. Okay. Uh yeah, no. Um we got we we're into the story base more because it it's it's a way to involve the crowd. It's a way to to get everyone and we can do all these nice moves, but if they don't mean anything, what what is what's what you know what you were taught in Paradise Alley that psychology is everything. To be able to have that crowd in the palm of your hand, bring them up, bring them down, like you said, cheer us, boo us, what what have you. Uh, that's that's what we that's what we enjoy the most. Mm. Uh, you know, taking you guys on that ride. Now, on uh, speaking of on that ride and character, uh, when I first started seeing you guys, you weren't really bad guys. You you were the face, if you will, if I remember correctly. The crowd loved you. We did the whole House of Pain thing and blah 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 and all of that good stuff. I don't like to do that. My dad even does it. I cannot believe he's a retired. He's retired and he's doing the whole house of pain shit. Are you kidding me right now? Uh, but again, you've taken us on this ride from when you were baby faces, good guys, if you will. Uh, how, which do you like to play? Uh, the, the good guys, the bad guys, which is easier for both of you to play? Well, uh, the, best, the best thing about me and Hakim is we can actually do both. 
it, it really, whatever the match calls for, whatever the promotion needs, this is what we're going to do. Uh, if I have my choice, if I have my selection, I like heel. I enjoy making you guys mad. I enjoy you guys cursing me out. I love it. Uh, I'm not not too much for the face, but we can do it both. You know, that's a part of being a great tag team is being able to do whatever is called of you at the time. Mm, exactly. Uh, Mr. Hakim, do you have to change your moveset when you're a heel or when you're a face? Do you have to make it look differently in the ring? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, even the um the choices of um moves that I want to do, it has to be different from being a baby face or a heel. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a different different um move set. And um I mean I enjoy both. Me particularly I enjoy both, but um heel is more 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 <laughs> better. <laughs> yeah, it was more better. <laughs> hey, to be honest with you, that seems to be more of your comfort zone, if you will. You guys come out because you know, you've got the darker colors on, you're big guys, and your stuff is in your face, smash mouth, and, and <laughs> no bullshit. Uh, so, I mean, I, you guys, it seems a little bit more of a comfort zone to be the heel or the bad guy. And uh, again, you take us on that ride, and we go right with it. Because that's one thing about you guys. If you're playing the good guy or the bad guy, you give us those signals that's needed to communicate without communicating. Right. And I know that you, you have the same entrance music. That doesn't have to differ. But the way you carry yourself coming out that curtain originally, that's those signals that you guys always give us. And we can read. Okay. And I know it doesn't go back and forth like from show to show. Mm -hmm. But again, when you were taking us on that ride from a transition to this to that, um, we can tell because you give us that signals. You do your job very well, and I hope that we're reacting when you're giving us those signals as much as as you're sending them out, you know? Oh, absolutely. I definitely and – that, and that's the key to it. Like, we can go out there and and do, you know, all the crazy stuff, but what, what um stands us apart from everybody else is that we're different. Just like you say, we, we put you on a roller coaster ride. We not – going out there to do all the fancy stuff because you already see that probably in the opening the opening of the show and probably after we're done you always going to remember the house of pain because we always bring something different like you say we give you a roller coaster ride mm -hmm. but uh, he said it, he said it the best right there i don't he's he's right on the money hey uh mr Payne, you add to that roller coaster ride uh yourself and hakeem by at the beginning of the friday night alley shows you guys kind of get a little on the microphone pre-show and you have a little fun with the fans and yes. uh holy shit boys and girls you want to see some fun pre-show sometimes you know because there's not a lot of men and women that are coming out there uh because they've already practiced trying to keep their oats about them and they don't want to come out because there's really not that much of time when we get in and then the action starts right up that's another good thing about those friday night alley fights we get in and like five ten minutes later bam 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 we're on action but with the, in the meantime, <laughs> you guys take the microphone and have some fun with the fans. Do you remember a specific time, maybe? Not that long ago, you came over and we were going back and forth. There was something about uh, an ointment or something, and because I took something out of my pocket. Uh, those are some fun, fun times, my friends. Yes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we definitely appreciate the, you know, the Alley Fights crowd because, you know, you guys come out. And you guys support us. You guys support the product. It's not about, oh, hey, look, they got a star on the card. Or, oh, hey, look, um, this person's going to be there. You you guys come and you enjoy all of us. So that's just our little way of doing it. Again, cameras are off, so it doesn't really matter. You know, so I mean, but that, that's our appreciation for you guys. Mm -hmm. And you handed me a paper that said you had an ointment for a rash. I don't know. I, <laughs> I didn't want to touch it. You You gave it to me. <laughs> but no, yeah, I mean it's it's fun. It's fun. Friday night alley fights is something that we we really take a lot of pride and passion in, and, and you know that that's just like our way of saying thank you. I I would say, Mister Hakim, I will tell you one thing. When that started, now I know it used to be before, so I'll call it the resurgence of the Friday night alley fights. I've been there from the very first one, and I've missed two. And I'm counting because when I miss them, I'm, I, I'm very upset. Uh, 
I've been there since the first one. And that first one, I will tell you, it was jam slammed in there. People were standing up against what there had to be at least a hundred people, if not more in that right. small area you guys got going on very intimate crowd. And it was amazing seeing that. Didn't that give you a little something, something right here, seeing the fans come out and checking out wrestling like that? A- absolutely. Every every time, whether we, Nick and I, is in the ring or behind the scenes and we see the work that we put in and see how y'all enjoy it, oh, man, it's, 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 you can't even explain it. It's just a great thing. It makes us keep us going, you know? Like, when we see things like that, like, we, sometimes we get a little, little hoot, like, damn, why are we still doing this shit? And then when we see the um the reaction from the crowd and the work that we put in and how they embrace us, mm-hmm. it keeps us going. I mean, I, I think that's a oh, go ahead, Mister. Go ahead, Mister Payne. No, no, I was just say like a, a lot of people, you know, don't understand. Sometimes this business gets gets hard, mentally, physically, it it, it messes with you. Um, but in that same right, like like Hakim said, when we see you guys that 100 people packed in that little place to see us, that gives us no better feeling that this is more than worth it. All the physical toughness, all the mental toughness we need, you guys are there to really help us do all that, and we appreciate the hell out of you. I mean, we hate you sometimes, but we appreciate you the same way. Well, you know, that's the relationship of wrestling. You know, the I call it a dance, if you will. The dance between wrestler, fan, fan, wrestler. Without and and I know like we're watching on TV right now. Holy cow! Very di- different atmosphere. Yeah. So we're missing that element of it. Some are watching. Some aren't watching. Some might just kind of come back when maybe the crowd. I don't know what the hell to how to gauge wrestling right now. It's such a, a weird. Not that ever, anything else isn't, but wrestling specifically is at such a very odd stage in its existence. I we've never seen anything like this. Uh, you guys are continuing to watch the Raws, the SmackDowns, the Dynamites and stuff without the crowds. Are you still keeping an eye on what's going on in the scene? I check in on it. Um, it's not the same for me. But, you know, I still try to um, keep up with current current events that's going on. Mm-hmm. Just, to, just, to, just to know what's going on and just to be, you know, just keep an eye out on it. Mm. I'm watching everything. I, I've I've loved this business from the time I was two or three years old. I don't know anything else. So I mean I mean I do, but this is what I'm passionate about. So I mean I watch every I watch everything. It is hard to watch without a crowd. You guys add such a dynamic that's needed. But I mean I think it's good because now they have to focus on the in-ring performance. What do you mm-hmm. guys bring? Who, who can perform? Who can still captivate us from home? Uh, but yeah, I mean I, I watch it all. NXT, AEW impact like we i'm on it i enjoy mm-hmm. it i love it uh there was one takeaway from wrestlemania and it's kind of weird it's an odd takeaway but i want to point it out because there was so many cool matches going on there was a lot of build up and i know the crowd wasn't there and all of that stuff that we were just discussing but you know who was a star of wrestlemania the damn sailing fan <laughs> <laughs> you remember fan that the yeah it was the only fan in the building I, holy crap, there was more chatter about that fucking fan than there was about half the matches in a two-day period of WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah, I, it is what it is. I mean, it's, at the end of the day, as long as we're having fun, right? And you yeah. watch it, you want to enjoy it. I, I, Is it silly? It's silly because they should be paying attention to the guys in the ring. But in, in such a crazy time where everything is so serious, you need that kind of just, hey, let's just laugh at what we got. Let's make the best. <laughs> It is what it is. The, the performance ceiling, the performance center ceiling fan makes a star run at WrestleMania. That is so crazy, man. I'm surprised <laughs> he doesn't have an Instagram page yet. <laughs> hey, don't it's give Uncle coming. Vince any ideas. How did you say it? How did you say it was coming? <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, Uncle Vince or, uh, or or Triple H are going to steal the idea. They're going to run with it, make a ton of money, and you're going to get screwed out of it. I'm sorry, Mister. Yeah. <laughs> <Man. laughs> We already got screwed by them, I think. Plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's what I'd actually like to talk about is the character because I love character. It intrigues me so because the House of Pain as a collective, you guys started as a trio with uh, Daddy Dre. Um, talk to us, the fans, 
about how you cultivated the character because as a collective, it's got to be a character, you know, and then you have your individual ones because it has to represent something somewhere, you know, at the beginning, the house of pain. Take us fans on a journey of how that kind of uh, culminated. Yeah, Kim, you, you, you have a better memory than I do. <laughs> well, <laughs> when we first, um, when we was first um, put together by Joel, um, to be honest with you, we didn't like it. Because again, we was all three of us was singles competitors, so we was looking to make a name for ourselves individually. So we got put together, and I said, you know what? I looked at it, I said, you know what? Let's try it. And from day one, it was supposed to be a thing where Nick and I was the tag team, and Big Daddy Dre would be the singles guy. And you know, if it was companies that had six men or like trio type of thing that we get together to do that. But it was always almost like a horseman type of thing where mm -hmm. Nick and I is the tag team. Dre would be that singles dude going after any singles title and whatever company that we at. And that's, that's where it became. But, you know, as it, as it progressed, it didn't, it didn't kind of fit into a place like that. Yeah. You notice you see me and Nick doing more of the tag stuff, me and Nick doing more of the character stuff. So mm -hmm. they kind of kind of left him behind. But that was the initial plan was for Nick and I to be the tag team and for Dre to be the singles competitor. Yeah, I, it, it is funny because when we first when for me, when they told me, hey, we're going to start this group. It's going to be called the House of Pain. I initially thought I was going to be the singles guy and Hakim and Dre would have been the tag team. Because <laughs> at, at the time I was not I didn't want no parts of tag team. That just wasn't my thing. Uh, then we actually had a tag match, me and Hakim. And that, just that one match, it was just like we were there. Yeah. It, it felt good. It felt right. The, the people got it, got with it. So it was like, all right, yeah, like Hakim said, like, let's give this a shot. Let's give it a try. And then that's when we kind of made that that look. And then as far as who we are, our character, is not much of a stretch from who we are personally. Me, Hakim, and Dre both lived in the Bronx. We live in, you know, a housing development. It was, you know, we, that's the environment we grew up in. That's the environment we got. So the hoodies, the scullies, like these are things that we normally wear. These are things that we normally do. And our attitude is just us with the volume turned up to 10. Mm. Uh, the best characters in wrestling. Again, we talk about that on this show. The best characters in wrestling, it seems, because there are some that, you know, flourish that are made from scratch and are taken from the creative minds but some of the greatest characters are the extension of yourself like you said turned up um it seems to be a little bit easier to work with in wrestling to not have to take a character with the attire with a mindset with a backstory the whole nine yards to start that from scratch try to apply it and may, may it be force-fed, if you will, and it's just not working. And then down the road, and I've mentioned her name a couple times, and I, I know you guys are familiar with her, uh, Nakoma Tala. Now, Nakoma Tala, she had to find her inner spirit. It took her a little bit, right? She used to be something else. And then she said at one point, it was like, you know what? I'm not connecting with the fans. I'm not really feeling it. I'm feeling that it's forced. So I took a break. I sat in the woods, literally sat in the woods, found my inner spirit. And now look at her, Nicole Matala, flourishing as a, as, as a character, as a wrestler, as a worker, the whole nine yards. And, that, and that's, and that's what it is. Stuff got to happen organically. And that's, that's, that's the problem with, with wrestling as well. Like people are trying to force it. And you as a fan, I know you pick up on it. Like I know you see guys all the time. You watch them and you, you're not feeling them. That's because they're not feeling what they're doing either. They're just trying to go out there and portray something that they're not. It has to happen organically. Yeah, it's it's easier to to be you than to try to... Okay, it's easier to be you because the people will see that it's genuine. If you don't believe it, the, you know, the crowd's not going to believe it. So to put a character and, you know, things like that, It's character, some characters have a shelf life. There's only but so many things you can do as a character. But as yourself, you can evolve and you can keep going and you can, you know, it's, it's, I would much prefer being a reality with the volume turned up to 10 than the character. 
uh, again, some of the greatest characters in wrestling today and even in the past have done that. And I can't wait because this is going to blow over. And I know the House of Pain, they've been on fire. And I can't wait to see where and what they do in the future because, I mean, you guys really know what's up. You know how to work the people. You know how to work in the ring. Um, and I want to kind of, <laughs> I want to talk about a thing that Mr. Hakeem does kind of flips the shit out of me. Not only me, but other fans. You're a big guy, Mr. Hakeem. You kind of dive a suicida, a tope suicida, if you will. You kind of dive through the ropes like you're fucking yes. Will Ospreay. And my man, you're not Will Ospreay. You are Ospreay. You are uh, Hakeem Ali. What the hell's the matter with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to I have to bring that out sometimes. You know, I don't do it often because if I keep doing it, then it's going to become lame. So I keep it on occasions when it needs to be done. And, you know, I like to shock the fans. So, you know, I try to do something different every time. You never know. You might see me do a moonsault in the future. I'm waiting to see that one. <laughs> Are you you oh, but yeah. listen, you got to you got to understand my first my first learning in professional wrestling was from lucha. So, I mean, that's why I was I, learning lucha stuff first before I learned psychology. I I, I, I want to see how came do a moon so. Oh, please, oh please, oh please. Uh I would love to see that. That would be amazing. I would lose my absolute shit and you know what my dad's going to do? He's going to be like Holy, he's probably going to grab me and shake me like violently. He's going to say, holy shit, did you see that? And he's going to be like, yes, I did. Would you stop pulling on me? Uh, big guys that do medium guy stuff, we lose our crap so easily. And uh, I want to say the first time that we saw Mr. Ali do that whole, wow, outside the ring thing was at the Mohegan Sun. We were at the first casino show. I don't know if you did it previously, but all I know is it made a mark in my feeble little brain on that specific night because I jumped up with my camera. You were on the opposite side of the ring from where I was. But, man, I zoomed right in. It looks all grainy and shitty, but I got you. <laughs> I got you going right out the ropes, man. Wow. That was, what that, a good was time. My, that was my first time doing it in Connecticut. It definitely was. That was my first time in Connecticut doing it. I used to do it in New York. Oh, really? Yeah. In the oh. beginning of my career, I used to do it a lot. Now, I'd like to hear from each of you singles before you got together and you were trying to take this singles run. Mr. Payne, Mr. Ali, in that order specifically. Uh, <laughs> I can't, I hope there is some goofy name. If <laughs> what the beginnings of your career is never stellar, you look back at it, you're like, what the fuck was I doing back then? Sometimes you oh, look yeah. back, sometimes stuff worked, sometimes stuff didn't work. Please tell us, the fans, that you came up with some crazy act, crazy ass, goofy character like Kane did uh, when he was like the Christmas tree creature or something like that. Please tell me you did something ridiculous. Uh, no, I was always, I, I wasn't always, a Christmas I was, yeah, <laughs> Hakim has always, Hakim's always been cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I. <laughs> I, on the other hand, no, I went through so many different phases. But my first wrestling name that I thought was really great was Nick Nitro. It was horrible. It just wasn't me. Uh, I also Nick went through Nitro. when I when yeah when I realized that was a dumb name. Uh, I was Rampage. <laughs> what, what the hell was that? It, really? Yeah, it was horrible. Yeah, it made no sense. It made no sense. And then sitting back with one of the people who like taught me how to bump. Which his name was uh, Happy the Clown. He's done at alley fights once a time, one time, but uh, he was the first person who taught me how to bump and who kind of like smarted me up to the business. And he was sitting there and was like, "Bro, when you when you in there, it looks like you're causing a lot of pain. So why not just call yourself Nick Pain?" And when he said it, I was like, "Oh, okay." I didn't like it at first. I didn't want P A I N E. It would seem a little cheesy to me. But then P A Y N E, and I was like, "All right, well, that's an actual last name." And I started to mess with it, and and that's what I stuck with. It was, you know, it was it was cool. But that Nick Nitro days were horrible, <laughs> horrible. Trust me, I know I'm gonna get a ton of shit now on, online for it. People, oh, hey, Nick Nitro, but it's all right. 
Well, that's kind of where I'm going. If we're at a show and I yell out Nick Nitro and I get I'm somebody else to maybe do it. guardrail and pile driver. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what's going to happen. <laughs> don't do it, boys and girls. For my safety, for my life, don't do it, please. We're friends. Don't do that shit. Uh, God, that would be a fucking blast. Oh, my God. Um, <clears throat> now, PAPW, they are molding and bringing up some very, very fine young men and women. Uh, I will tell you one thing, man. I had Matias on here. Ooh, I love me Matias. Love some Matias. Uh, don't look so happy. Gee whiz. Uh, I love Matias. Uh, now, I asked him a question, and it's to slight nobody in the biz or in the company at all. I'd like to kind of see what you see as a uh, you know, because you, you've been in the game for a little bit. The, the younger generation that's coming up in PAPW, who do you say that could really get, that really gets it and is going to be seen on a bigger stage, maybe sooner than later in their career? Because there's some great names upcoming in PAPW. Yeah. I, I see um, the Haven. They listen. They um. They get it. Okay, they get it. They went to another company and did their thing a couple of months back, and they get it. Um, we were I there. Was, we we were there. Right. And I also see, believe it or not, I also see, um, Flash Waller. Cause he has that you know, that high flying style that you know a lot of companies like these days. So he definitely had that. He just need to put on a little bit more weight. But other than that, I can see, I can see him. I can see him definitely um, doing something. Yeah, now for me, like off the top of my head, three three rookies that I think are gonna actually do a lot, and and I'm rooting for. Flash Wall is one, but like he said, he need he needs a sandwich or two. Maybe spend the time some time with the House of Pain. We'll teach him how to eat. Um, <laughs> The Haven for sure. We've been in there with them, and you know they're they're young and they're good. They can only get better. Right. Uh, another one that people don't know, he's only had a few matches, but we've been able to be around a lot. Is Kylon King? Ooh. Oh yeah. yeah, I I think I think those guys right there, if they keep their head straight, if they learn the psychology and learn that sometimes less is more. Mm -hmm. Um. um and you know, and they they build their characters. I think they'll they'll definitely be be successful. They're so young, and they're getting an opportunity to be around a lot of great talent. And yeah. you know, as long as they as long as they put the passion in, they put the work in, mm -hmm. they're gonna succeed, for sure. And and I know going, you know, when you're in your home town, not not really your hometown, but your home base, being a PAPW show now does their shows at the annex. You know, besides the Friday Night Alley fights. Uh, now, there, and I'm not saying not at the Friday Night Alley fights either, but, man, when the Haven comes out, when, you know, the, the Dustin Wallers come out, the crowd, they absolutely love these kids, man. So their characters, the people have already grasped onto them. And like you're saying, <laughs> slow it down just a tad because they're so young and they want to go, 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 go. Maybe pull it back just a little bit. <laughs> um Oh, yeah. man. No, I mean, it's like, we get it. We get it. It's, if you would have put me in a ring at 15, 16, and not in a backyard situation, but in a situation where I can actually make things happen, I'm going to move a thousand miles a minute as well. But they're learning, they're learning to slow it down and, and, to, and to tell that story. They'll, they're they're going to succeed, man. I, 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 nothing but the best for them. I, I say the same thing because PAPW is doing a fine job over there with their students. Uh, now, PAPW, for those that don't know, Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling, based out of East Haven, they got this nice little area for a training facility. That's where they have their smaller shows, the Friday Night Alley Fights. Then they bring their bigger shows on the road, being a venue you know, of, of, of sorts. Could be a school, could be like an annex club. Very cool. I like that annex club. Very cool. Got the concessions and everything built in. I love that about it. Because um, I'm skinny. I need a sandwich now and then. But uh, yeah, I, Paradise Alley, you guys are really having some good times over there. Now, what drew you guys, because you're from the New York City area, 
what drew you guys as wrestlers to kind of maybe get away from that area and come up this way to PAPW? You want me to answer that? Yeah, you go, go ahead. You, <laughs> this is your wheelhouse, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, during, during the time we was we was we was on top in New York. We definitely was on top. Uh, we was um, making things happen, and it was getting a little stale. It was like the, I'll say maybe the the people that was running it. It was just getting too, too congested. It felt felt like we wasn't getting the opportunities that we deserved. So I reached out to Paul Roma. And um, he said, okay, well, come down. Let me see what you got. And Nick and I came up there, and we showed him what we was about. And he was like, y'all guys is good. The only thing missing from y'all is that ring psychology. And if you like, I would teach you that. And we got on the board with that, and then our career went even higher. Once we got the um, the in-ring psychology in it. It got us even higher to what we was already at. So we was we was good. I always say this. Rome, we was we was good. Roma made us great. So he put the like the following touches on us to make us a great tag team. Yeah, there, and, was, there was a lot of people who uh who contributed to the, the making the house of pain. You know, our, our first trainer, Joel Maximo, he taught us that that style that you guys like where you go, holy shit. You, I didn't know you guys can do that. We owe a lot of that to Joel Maximo. He was he was a good teacher, and he showed us a lot and took care of us. Uh, then Roma, like Hakim said, took it to a whole nother level. He opened up a gate for us, and it was just like, holy shit. The, the things that we learned, the things that we can do now, thanks to him, is like, there's no, no way we could repay that. Uh, could you feel that? Right when, you know, you guys did a little a little tryout for him, if you will. He was like, you guys are good. You need some psychology. You guys come back. You start working with him. Can you feel the change already as you just start working with him? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Within, within um, our next match, after doing, like, let's say, maybe a month training with him, the next, our next match, I think it was in PA, right? Yeah. Remember in PA? It was in PA, and... It just it took it to another level, and you just started to feel it. And he said that to us. He said, it's not going to make sense to you now. He said, one day you're just going to be in there, and you're going to say, I got it. I got it. And I know it happened to me. I was like, yo, we, we got it. <laughs> we got it. It's, it's there. It's there. That's why, it, that's why yeah, now, you sure. know, it, it's was, it was definitely one of those. Not a, 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 Hello? I don't know. He's got a funky connection over there. Yeah, knowing. yeah, I can. Do I? Oh, yeah. You were saying something? I thought you were saying something. No, no, yeah, okay. you good. You good. Oh, okay. Your, your, your connection, it gets a little funky over there, Mr. Payne. That's all. Um, I, now, I... no, no, that's quite all right. Now, Mr. Uh, Mr. Payne, uh, you do some cool medium-sized guy as a big guy stuff, too. You know, you guys aren't scared to, like, cannonballs and you know, flip around a couple here and there and do some really cool shit. And uh, how do the tag team maneuvers come together? Do you guys just kind of brainstorm together? Or is it like, holy shit, I think me and Hakeem can really pull this off. I got to give him a call. How does all of that culminate as a tag team? Uh, it's a little bit of both. Sometimes we, I mean, me and Hakeem, we go and train. We're in training every week. I mean, it's been slowed down a little bit now, but obviously with everything that's going on, going on, but we were training every week, so I would see him and be like, hey, let's try this. Or he would see me and go, hey, I saw this. Let's try it. And we grab a rookie, and we'll beat him up for an hour or however long it takes. <laughs> but, uh, no, yeah, and then a, a lot of it is also just teams that we admired. The Bulldogs, Demolition, the Heart Foundation, the Rockers, even. Like, you, you know, we, we there's no team that we look at and go, oh, no, we can't do that. We'll try it, and then sometimes we'll be like, all right, yeah, maybe we can't. But no, I grew up in in the earlier years of wrestling. I went to my first show, 1978, Bristol Central High School. Saw me some Bob Backlund, which you guys just had at PAPW. 
That was my very first match ever. It was Bob Backlund versus Cowboy Bob Orton. Not my first match, but it was what I remember that stands out from that event. Um, and the other one that stands out, and you guys are going to love this, Tito Santana and, and, and Ivan Putski as champions going against the Wild Samoans with Captain Lou Albano by their side. Now, nice. <laughs> the Wild so Samoans, I'm not saying that you guys are remind me of the, the Wild Samoans, but to a degree you do because you have that killer instinct. You work with the fans very well. They didn't talk much. You guys talk a lot. Um, but, you know, and you don't have a mouthpiece, per se, as a manager. But there's like a smidge of the Samoans that I feel that is in the House of Pain. Am I mistaken on that? We no, heard I, that. I actually take that as, like, one of the hugest, like, compliments ever. Right. Uh, one of our first times we were at Paradise Alley training, Big Steve see me take one bump. And I went outside the ring and he looked at me and said, you sure you're not Samoan? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, things like that. I love that. I love that comparison. Um, they're great. So, I mean, we, we definitely took a little bit of stuff from them. Um, but I love to hear it. I love to hear that, that people look at us in that light because they're probably one of the greatest tag teams ever. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Mr. When, when I see tag team wrestling, there's a lot of, um, I don't want to use the word choreography, but there's a little, it, it, it's totally different to being a singles uh, competitor because you have to be in sync. You've got to know what's what and where to position your opponent when you do certain things. And you've got to be able to trust that guy that's standing next to you or running. <laughs> running the ropes and it's coming full steam ahead of you to hurt the guy that you're holding that he doesn't hurt you at the same time. <laughs> uh, but tag team wrestling, a lot of trust. You guys seem to really have something going that you each trust each other very much. You have this fluidity about you. Um, has it taken a very long time? Or when you guys, like you said, you had your first match and I got that and you seem to think that it clicked and we should run with this but when it really started kind of fluidly running was that post Paul Roma or was it leading up to it because once you started feeling like man we can do this shit you know it was before it was before we met Roma we was we was in sync from from <laughs> from our first match I mean it might sound kind of cheesy but we was in sync from that first when they first put us in a tag match with each other, we was in sync. And we looked at each other, we was like, okay, we're going to do this. I, I, I definitely yeah. feel like if, if that first match didn't go the way it was, I think we both would have, we wouldn't have been here now. We right. wouldn't have been a team. That first match, we, it was, that instant was like, I, I can do this. I, you know, and, and I trust Hakim with, with everything, if, you know. I know that he's going to be there, and he knows that I'm going to be there, no matter what. There's a lot of, you know, me and I can take pride in tag team wrestling. There's a lot of tag teams out there that you see, oh, they, they're a team here, but they're singles guys other places. You don't get me without Hakim. Just like this interview, where we wanted to do the stir in the pot, I, I'm not going to do an interview without my brother. He ain't going to do it without me. Yeah. You know, like, that. that's, everything we do is as a team. Mm -hmm. That's why when we say that we are tag team wrestling, we are tag team wrestling. That's what we uh, mean. And, and like like Nick said, there's a lot of dudes that was a, claim to be tag teams, and next thing you know, they got a different company doing single stuff or fighting each other. So it's like what? Like what the hell is going on? So I mean, the part, the part of tag team wrestling is 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 not there. But Nick and I are gonna bring it back. You starting to see more. More now, within the time me and Nick started tagging, you're starting to see one. You got the revival, you got um private party, you got um uh, proud and powerful. Like those dudes are those are real tag teams, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and young and those are guys we seen, and those are guys that we seen too when we was coming up. Like they were a tag team, and they and they stuck to that. They stuck to mm -hmm. being a tag team, and that was and that was it. Like if you want to be mentioned up there with some great teams, you got to do what they do. 
You know, mm-hmm. we're not, we're not going to say and say that we're the we're the inspiration for them being teams. No, I don't want that to be, you know, the narrative that we're trying to put. But that's definitely the 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 line that we we followed. Mm-hmm. We saw those teams. Those teams didn't do singles matches like that. Right. They stuck as a team and they stuck together. And, and that's the thing about teams like you were mentioning. I'm going to pick out just going to pick out that little Jenga piece of the revival. Um, kind of weird. Uh, career in a WWE because we seen them come in and man, everybody grasped onto him. The people that knew him in the uh, indie scene were ecstatic for him and really were behind these guys. They got weird lost in the shuffle. I don't know why. I don't know what it is, but like you guys were just describing, they were a tag team. None other. That's it. Cut and try. You didn't see one or the other. One was hurt. It didn't matter. The other one wasn't in the ring portraying as a singles wrestler or what have you. And then now they kind of poof because there's a lot of weird shit going on in WWE with the contracts and, you know, the money that's being passed around or whatever. Now they're not in the company. Would you look forward to seeing a tag team like the Revival with the way they bring that classic tag team style to AEW, because everybody's saying that's where they're going to go, is AEW. AEW is a flavor of a different color over there. I I would much rather see them in the end of I feel like if they do decide to go to AEW, I think in, 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 just to have them as the NWA Tag Team Champions, they're a team that, that could definitely do that. And I would like to work them in, in, in the NWA. <laughs> But no, I mean definitely. Uh, they no matter where they go, they're going to be a valuable asset to that company. Mm-hmm. Uh, WWE did drop the ball on them, but in WWE, the top guy is, is what everybody wants to be, and the singles guy is everything. Um, I definitely think that they're putting a new stamp on tag wrestling, and I, I, you know, I'm grateful for it because that's what me and my brother are trying to do. You know, absolutely. Uh, you know what I like to do when there's a tag match. I always look at the corners. I want to see where the tag ropes are because there's a couple things. Sometimes companies don't have tag ropes, and I can't wait to F with the guys when they come out and tell them to grab the tag rope. But there's not a tag rope. I love doing that. That cracks me the F up. Uh, another thing that really gets me going is when you guys go on the opposite <laughs> on the opposite corners. If the tag rope is over here and you guys start positioning yourselves on these opposite corners, Holy shit, I love that too because I got to yell at you. The tag rope is over there, you big dummy. And uh, man, as I, <laughs> whew, I have fun with that shit so much because that's what tag ropes are there for. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> when the tag ropes aren't there, what do you guys do? How do you pick a, a, a corner? Because I, as a fan, I'm very curious. Um, yeah, I pay attention more to where a hard cam is. Uh, you want the baby face on the hard on on the side where hard cam can see them and get their comeback. Uh, it tag rope. Sometimes we run into the weird situation where one corner has a tag rope and the other one doesn't. So you kind of just go to one, and the other team's forced to go to the opposite side. Yeah, but that's usually. I mean, that's I, I think the tag rope is a great thing because it adds an, another element to the match, especially for us as heels. It adds a. a specific dynamic that we can use so when they don't have it it is kind of like a jesus this sucks but you know you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do mm. uh, at a test of strength show i must have yelled grab the tag rope about a hundred million times uh <laughs> man what a lot of fun that was because there wasn't a damn tag rope i was laughing my ass off but then they replaced them they put tag chains a little sketchy if you ask me because now you can take the chain Wrap it around your hand, pop your opponent, and hey, that's usually in your guys' uh, <laughs> wheelhouse. Taking oh, the old yeah. chain, no, not saying that you cheat, but you cheat. Um, and you well, know, that's a little... hey, when? Uh, well, there was Listen, a man once said, "Win if you can, lose if you must, but always." And it's only cheating if you get caught. Yeah, you talking about? Well, there was that Friday. In, in, in April in 2018, if I'm not mistaken, then the following week, an- another time there, then I think there was a, a week or two skip, then in like May, 
there was like another time that you guys, and then after that, there was another two, and then I think we skipped a week, and then there was another one, and then the big and shows. Was mistaken with the pyramids of power. Ah! You know, Don, oh my god! You, I am so glad you, you got started me. this interview off so good, and then you yeah. then you go and insult us by saying that we cheat. I don't know what yeah. happened. I thought we were oh bonding here. I thought I. I cannot believe Mr. Ali just said the pyramids of power. I had, uh, holy crap, I had Mr. Ding Ding. What, if, what a weird name. I asked him about it. He was very <laughs> not nice about the answer because it was it's a family name. Holy shit, was he pissed. We had fun, though. A Mr. Aladdin was on. They called the warden on me, very pissed off. None of them guys really like me much. We have a very odd relationship. Uh, hell of a time that I had. <laughs> poking the bear and stirring the pot. That was amazing. Uh, but I want to lead into, you should have do me a favor, please. And I know you're not going to watch my stuff, but do me a favor. Go to, <laughs> go to the Ala Ding Ding one. Watch just the last minute. I called him by the wrong name and he absolutely lost every part of his soul. He was flipping the shit out. Yeah, got to go well, watch just the end of the Yeah, uh, <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, but my point being is, I've talked to the pyramids of power and um, I like to call them the powers of pyramid because that really sets them off. Um, they say that in PAPW, you guys specifically, they've called you out on the stirring the pot episode with uh, Mr. Ding Ding. They've called you out and said, you guys have beaten everybody in PAPW except, except <laughs> POP. What? Yeah. What? I listen, there's video <laughs> evidence. We've beaten them more times than we've beaten any tag team that we yeah. face. And any combination of them, if you want to yeah. do Zafar and Aladdin, Aladdin and Ding Ding, Ding Ding and Zafar, it don't make a difference. Any yeah. tag team you put in there with us, we are tag team wrestling. Don. It's not, you know, we're laughing and we're having a good time now, but when it comes cutting time and it comes business time, we are the greatest tag team. Yeah, and for them that get a shot at us, they gotta climb that ladder anyway. Who did they beat? Who did they beat to deserve a shot at the title? I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Your <laughs> silence is deafening for us right now. Exactly. But I mean, we we again that we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But again, like like Hakim said, they gotta climb that ladder. What we want is we want new team. Some would say have the buzz and have the, uh, you know, the, the popularity right now. Like, we, we really feel well, like it's that time. So any tag, we, 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 how's it pain is ready to take things to the next level, especially after all this is over. Well, I mean, they're a new, they're, they're a new tag team. They, they have uh, come to PAPW, uh, they are waves and curls. They are making a splash on the scene right now. Again, very young in their career. And I know you got to climb that ladder a little bit. But, I mean, hey, I think the fans wouldn't even mind seeing something like that happen. No, huh? No, huh? I, no, no huh? I mean, I, waves and curls, they, they, uh -huh. they've been a thorn in our side recently. Um. I'm not one for the dancing. I'm not one for the uh, little popper thing that he got with the confetti. It makes a huge mess. Like I don't like that. Like uh, but I mean, we're not afraid of any tag team. Any team that wants to step across from us, we we willing to do it. It don't make a difference who it is. Waves and Curls, Team Espana, The Haven, The Pyramids, Collusion. N list them all. We ready. We are and always ready I for think, war. Didn't we beat one of those teams? Anyway, we beat one of those teams. So it, it, it's they, time they, for us to get some some new meat. We already demolished them, so it's time for new meat, man. Well, for sure, I, it's, it's definitely time for new people. I mean, I know that they're in a different company right now, and I know companies don't like to mix talent and such at times. But man, Mike, uh, the American Sumo, Mike Gamble, and Chuck O'Neill, Cold Steel Chuck O'Neill, are actually PVP champs right now. Just saying. Well, make it happen. You know them. You missed the Booker Man, ain't you? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
Don't want to no, get, get the word out, right? Get the word I, out. I can't. I, get the I word can't out. get the word. Okay. We, we accept that challenge. Get the word out. I can do that because I think what that is, would be uh, quite fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, whatever that that would definitely be a team that we that we want to work again. Any team that we haven't faced is a team we want to go against. Okay. Just because we always learn. Every anytime we're in there with a different type of opponent, we learn something. You never stop learning in this business. So yeah, we want to go against every tag team. If people consider them the best tag team, we want to go in there and prove that we're better. We want to go in there and prove that with the best tag. So whether it be, be them, whether it be uh, Brian Malonis and the Bear and the Beer City Bruiser, whether it be Pride and Powerful, whether it be Private Party, it don't matter. We want we want real teams, and people like to say, "Oh, you know, we're talking out of line." We're not. We're a great tag team. We stand just in, in the same spot with them. They've had opportunities that we haven't had yet. Now it's time for us to get those opportunities. Hey Nick, I also want I also want to shout out to Vaughn Eriks. Whoever, it don't make a difference. It doesn't want, make I we we every tag team. We want to prove that we're the best. Okay, I know we're saying all of these tag teams. I got one for you. It just popped into my feeble little brain. Bear Country. Holy crap, that would be something. You guys in Bear Country? Absolutely. That's something that needs to, to happen as well. Whether it be that chaotic, be a master. W don't matter. P A P W don't matter. It just it just have to get done. The right people got to make it happen. Because we should not run. From and and they're they're a good team. They're a great team. Like I don't want to take nothing from any of the teams that we mentioned. All great teams. But like we said, we want to prove that we're good. We want and if Bear Country wants to step up, then we then we can do it. We can make it happen. And it, like Hakim said, we'll go to them or they can become. But the proper people got to go the proper way about it. And, you, you know, Absolutely. we, we hear we business. Re- business. It's business at the end of the day. So mm-hmm. the business has to be right. All right. Uh, maybe we'll have to make some of that happen. Uh, a couple yeah, things before I, mean, I let you go. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Go ahead. Payne. Go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, any of the promoters out there that are watching or any promoters that might see this, if that's something that you want to put on your card, we're we ready to talk business. We're ready to make it happen because we think those matches would be incredible. Us in Bear Country, without question, would be a great match. That would be awesome. Uh, a couple questions before I let you guys go. Uh, where does that, uh, Big Daddy Dre fit into the whole the House of Pain thing? I, I'm kind of confused on what happened. We have kind of seen him just a smidge. What's going on with that whole thing? He turned on us. You've seen it. Ah. He, he teamed up with Nutris. Yeah. You know what happened? He walked. He walked away from us. He, you know, he had some things that he didn't like that were going on with us, and couldn't take it. He left. Then tried to come back and blame us for it. Look, me, you know, me and Hakim are going to make this thing happen. With him or without him, he had he didn't understand that, and hopefully now he does. Okay, I can accept that. Uh, an- another question: Why in the world do you kind of muscle on one Mister Matt DeCourt? We love Matt DeCourt. You guys force him to say things. Maybe they might be factual, but you guys really give him a hard time in the ring. Very curious why he's a smaller stature guy. He's not an athlete. He gives us a hard time. He should do his job. That's what I get on him about. He's not doing his job right. He announces properly, and that's that. Okay. So for future reference, how how should the House of Pain always be announced? Because I'm kind of confused on why Matt DeCourt is screwing his job up, because he's very professional. We are the longest reigning tag team champions in PAPW history. We are the only three-time Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling Tag Team Champions and the current New World Wrestling Extreme Tag Team Champions. And you want him to say all of that every single time you guys come out? Every yeah. Single- he better. If he doesn't want Hakim to slap him across the face. That's right. See, that's, see, that's not nice. He's not an athlete. 
you guys go in the gym, you work out. Matt DeCourt's not going to the gym and lifting. I've seen your stuff on, on the face page. You lift some crazy ass weights. You think that Matt DeCourt can hang with uh, Hakeem Ali and you're going to go in and, and just slap him around because you can't say whatever you want him to say correctly? Man, if you can't well, take the heat, stay out of the kitchen. You should know by now, right? Well, uh, yeah. well I can't. Maybe At he should write point it down. Does he learn. Yeah. Tell him, hey, the next time you see him, tell him to write it down. I, you know what? I should because it's your responsibility now. Right. It's your responsibility now. So, you know, now I'm going to look at you. When he's oh, hey. you want to look at <laughs> No. No. It comes to you. No, man. Okay. Uh, <laughs> boys and girls, we got to reach out to one Matt the court ASAP. I'm going to hang up with these guys. I'm going to send a, a face page message directly to Matt the court. Be like, hey, straighten your shit up. Look back at the end of this video because you got to do it right or don't do it at all because now we're both going to get killed. I don't like even like that deal. So I have a I'm question. here to help you guys. Question for you, Mr. Kincaid. I have a question. Why, okay. Why are you wearing any house of pain right now? <laughs> oh, God, I've been waiting for that one. <laughs> you know, you know they're, they're available now on ProWrestlingTees.com backslash the house of pain, right? You can go pick one up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I'm very aware. Oh yeah, I, I'm very aware. Uh, well, you oh, need to get one. Well, I'm wearing something very nice, if you will. About what you're wearing right now. You need a House of Pain shirt. The Kingdom, my friend. The Kingdom. Yeah, they can get it too. That's yeah. fine. They can get a House of Pain shirt as well. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. Not. You know what happened? I was ordering up at the House of Pain because I seen your new, your kind of new thing going on. And you've got the shirt thing going on, at, you know, on, online. So I typed it up. I went to the to the link, and I put in my credit card, and it said "boo," and I don't know why. It there it there's like a "boo" imprinted oh, on my card, and it wouldn't let me put in the entire number. I don't know what happened. Oh, All right, oh, so okay. the next time I see you, I'm gonna turn you upside down and shake you so the money come out of your pockets, and then you. <laughs> He said money, <laughs> like I got money. <laughs> you guys are really funny, man. You guys are hilarious. Holy cow. Uh, good yeah. stuff. We'll see. Uh, all right. Hey. Uh, one thing. We get dead. Okay. Well, one thing that I did not touch upon, and I'd be very remiss if I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I kind of announced you as you got some kind of rapping thing going on. Please tell us the fans. <laughs> What's going on with this whole rapping? I, listen, I do not know what you're talking about. <laughs> Come on. There's no on. rapping thing going yeah. on. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I do not know what you're talking about. Mr. Payne, you're laughing like a son of a bitch. There's something going on with this whole rapping thing and Hakeem, uh, Hakeem Ali. Please tell us what's going on. There listen, is nothing you know, going on. You're not going to draw a wedge between me and my partner, brother. I, I got to team up with this guy. He's got he's to watch my back. I don't know what you're talking about. There's nothing going on at all. I think you got wrong info. His brother you're thinking of. Well, I trust my source. I will say that because my source would kill me. Not that you guys wouldn't, but my source said, why don't you throw it out there and see what happens? And uh, <laughs> I, got I, got I got a feeling who said that. Who said that nonsense to you? And, and that person will 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 catch a beat down. No, hey, no, that's not no 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 no. That's not what that was meant for. We were supposed to have some funny ha ha moment, you know. Uh, I think we laughed about it. I got no information though, so you shouldn't even beat them because there's nothing there. Yeah, well, for to to save, yeah. In that, he has to get it, and I know who said it, and he's going to get it. <laughs> uh, it was Mr. Nick Payne. He messaged me on the Skype before we started. That is a lie. lie. <laughs> that is a lie. It wasn't that I get down like that. <laughs> Where I come from, snitches get stitches. We don't do that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys have been amazing. I cannot thank you enough for hanging out, dealing with my silliness, opening up a little bit and really talking to the fans about, you know, your transition, singles wrestler to tag team, the house of pain, with or without, uh, 
I always want to call him Dr. Dre. I don't know why. It was Big Daddy <laughs> Dre. It, it, it just wants to, I don't know why. Uh, with, with Big Daddy Dre, without Big Daddy Dre, you've got gold. You've got, I don't know, you're, you got like four belts going on. You got two apiece over there, right? That, 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 yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, nah, we got championships that, that just, you know, that we just kept, that companies went under. <laughs> that we still champions of, you know? So, yeah, it, you know, that's. Uh, the, the house of pain. Oh, oh my God. There's one thing that I really hate that I did not bring up. When you, <laughs> woo, when you guys come out, the crowd loves to use the, the house of pain. They kind of reverse you, re reverse it. They twist it a little bit up on you guys and they call you. <laughs> woo, and I didn't start this, so don't kill the messenger. They call you the house of pancakes. And oh my God, we love it. I don't know who started that, but if you have any idea when it started, who started it? Because I would love to shake their hand. Genius, if you will. Uh, when did well, that happen? The person that started that is actually a fan from New York named Nicholas. That, that was something that happened back when we was wrestling in New York. So it's not something that's, oh, maybe... The fans saw some old footage of us and then started using it because that's something that happened back years ago. So it's that nothing was the first new. Time you heard it. I don't appreciate it. I don't like it. Although pancakes are delicious, I don't. I don't think that we are the house. Of I think that they're just jealous that we're the greatest tag team they've ever seen and we've beaten all their favorites. That's and right. That here or there, it's not like hey. What am I be they keep happening. We're gonna throw pancakes at y'all. <laughs> Ah, hey, no new day shit, okay? Yeah, I'd give him exactly. Hey, but if you're a three time champion, you got to be a three time loser. So, you know, you have been beaten here and there uh, a couple times, few times, three times at least. So, you know, it's not like you always win. You cheat a lot, but you don't always win. Um, But I really got to say, you guys have been amazing to sit and talk to us, the fans. I really appreciate it, and especially with everything going on. Uh, coming in as a tag team, like you said, where one goes, the other don't go. If I want, if I want an interview, I gotta have you both on. And I really appreciate your time, you guys. I know we had some fun. We did a little ribbon. We had some ha has, but we also got some serious stuff out of these guys. And I—that's the stuff that I look for, man. Uh, very open, and it gives us. If you don't know who the House of Pain is, get on the face page and all of that stuff. Give us some of that social media stuff before I let you guys go, so we can get some new fans on the House of Pain. Hit them up, brother. Hit them up, uh, Nick. Okay. Uh, we got at the House of Pain official, House of Pain underscore official on Twitter and Instagram. Um, we're also on YouTube as the House of Pain YouTube page. Um, I am at TN Pain 19 on Twitter. Go ahead, brother. Um, Hakeem Ali on Twitter. Um, Hater Killer on Instagram. And on Facebook, Hakeem Ali. Oh, I just, I actually just got a text message from Ref Bill. He told me to tell you, Don Kincaid, you are a dick. Nah! I hate, you know what? <laughs> That's going on my list. All right. I've got a list specifically for Ref Bill. They've added up a lot. And me and Ref Bill, I used to love that man to pieces. We had such a great relationship. He started hitting me. He hit me with a kendo stick. Then he hit me with a chair. Then he kicks me in my shin every single show. And if he doesn't, now check this out. If he happens to walk by and doesn't visually see me, you know what my dad does? Hey, Ref Bill, you forgot to kick my kid. And then <laughs> Ref Bill will come back and pop. kick me. I love your pop. I'm gonna, yeah, your you dad know, is a smart man. Your your pop. Pop. I'm going to give your pops a, a, a eight by ten. For sure. That's bullshit. He Why has that Oh, oh look at that. Oh, yeah, that's look at that. right there. Yeah. That's hey. little Ali in training. You know what? All of the silliness put aside, everything we've talked about wrestling tonight, boys and girls, that is what it's all about right there. It's family, being healthy, being safe, talking to friends. We're talking wrestling. You guys, I love you guys. I don't care what we've gone through. I love you guys to pieces, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> Love you too, man. Yeah, man. We definitely love you, man. We appreciate everything you guys do. 
Uh, we appreciate everything you do for us personally. You know, just even talking to us and hanging out with us, we appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. Thank you, all the fans. I love to hear you guys yell at me. Love to hear you boo me. Love to hear you boo my brother. Just keep keep it going, and please stay safe, man. That Anybody else is listening, right. stay in the house. Yeah, absolutely. So we can uh, get back to entertaining. Tell uh, tell Ref Bill he can suck it. Uh, this has been <laughs> starting a pot with Don Kincaid. And my very special guest, The House of Pain, D-A, don't do T-H-E. You're going to end up at some weird porn site. The House of Pain, uh, uh, Nick Payne, and former rapper known as Hakeem Ali. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>